always wondered what it would be like to spend 10 days alone in winter. But I know the question marks that always come up on a trip like this. Will the weather be gentle or intense? Will conditions even allow for a decent adventure? What trails will turn up in the bush and where will they lead? What creatures will reveal themselves either above the ice or below? And if I make it to 10 days, will I be exhausted from fending off the elements or find myself in the swing of a bygone way of life? Before this winter passed me by, I intended to find out and I had a feeling it would be a trip to remember. No way. <gasps> Two of them. Seventeen below this morning when I left the car, but with the sunshine and hauling probably 200 pounds a gear, I'm shedding layers fast. This trail's been terrific so far. It's unbroken aside from some old, likely wolf tracks. So that likely means that no one has come in here all winter, which is pretty sweet. From the air with the drone and on satellite at home, I could see that this trail should get me to the ponds where I want to establish the first camp. But beyond that, I'm not too sure. If all goes well and I make it to my destination lake after that, it should be the longest winter trip I've ever done, so I'm really looking forward to it. So I'm a few kilometers down the trail and it looks like these destinations aren't going to come easy. I flew again with the drone and I can't even see a way to these ponds, let alone the rest of the route. So I'm going to leave my load here and try to do a little route finding. It's almost impossible to take a long freight toboggan through woods like this. So I'm going to have to find something. Well, it wasn't looking too good, but finally stumbled across a trail that I thought I saw from the air. Just a small trail. So I'm going to follow this and see where it leads. So this is the trail I thought I could see a trace of on satellite. So this should get me to the main lake. So that's good news. Bad news is I have no idea how to get my gear onto this trail. And there's a blast of snow coming soon, so... It's alright. Make for an adventure, that's what I'm here for. Just came to a creek that flows into the ponds I was hoping to reach, and it is wide open. Had an unusually mild winter here, everywhere almost. And yeah, that's, that's gonna be a little bit of a problem. Beautiful though. Dang, this might rule out the big lake I was hoping to get to because there are warm temperatures coming for the back half of this trip. And this could be flowing pretty strong by that point 
Not to mention even getting my whole outfit over it right now, I'm likely to get it soaked. So, yeah. Hope I can get to this pond and start there. <laughs> So after two hours of trying to scout that trail, I've come up empty handed. I'd really have to slog to get over there to those ponds. So the thought of that just kind of fills me with dread. It would be, it would be pretty awful. So I can also continue down this trail, which doesn't lead where I want to go, but maybe I'll just find out where it does go. That kind of fills me with hope, better than dread. This is an old forestry road, so it's wide open. If this was a normal winter with several feet of snow, I could get through this stuff. It'd be a nice level platform, but not like this. This is much nicer. I also spent all three drone batteries, so I won't be able to use that again until I charge it. Snow's starting to come down. More and more blowdown across this road, but I'm getting close to a small lake. This lake is nestled in the little hills that were shown from the drone earlier. So it just keeps climbing up and up and up. And this 200 pound slippery load just wants to slide backwards. <laughs> it's so close. The final hill to get up here is pretty nuts. So I'm scouting it just to make sure it's gonna be worth it. Getting low on daylight, and I got a lot more than I bargained for today. About triple the distance plus a bunch of elevation. But I'm here. The lake is just through there. I scouted the head just to make sure I could get through. And I am pretty spent, so I can't wait to set up my tent, get in my sleeping bag, and have blissful rest and sleep. It's gonna feel amazing. What a relief. Here it is. Just gotta find home now. So normally the number one thing I'm looking for is standing dead wood for a campsite, just to have it close and handy. But I would really love morning sun and to maximize the sun as much as possible, which this spot would do. And there's a nice spot for the tent right there. So a good option here. I'll keep looking for a little bit. Decent spot right there, but the other spot's better. So I'm gonna take it been warming up all day. It's supposed to be just below freezing tonight, so at least I got that going for me. It's not cold. One big problem with this spot, it's got a big dark root mat over there, which looks like a prime bear den. Kind of freaking me out. I could go check it out and make sure there's nothing there, but that seems like quite a risk. It, it really looks like a perfect bear den. I, I don't think I can camp here. This is gonna be it. It's actually a nicer spot after looking at it a bit closer. Yeah, get the tent up, call it a day. in the light pretty fast here, but should have just enough time to get this set up.
all settled in here for the night. Lots left to do tomorrow. No fire tonight. Just don't have the energy and it's not going to be cold. So I do need water. So I'm using the last of my thermos water to melt some snow. And that'll get me through to tomorrow. I'm going to warm it up on the candle too if that doesn't do it. But it looks like a, it's more than done it. I think that would be a pretty slow boil. <laughs> This is the beautiful thing about destroying your body. This just feels amazing. Oh. It's gonna be a good sleep. Sun's starting to come up for day two, a very mild one at minus five, which is really nice to not have to scramble to get everything done last night. That's why I started the trip yesterday. A lot better than diving into minus 20 or 30, which I'm about to. But I have lots of nice firewood. I've got a beautiful camp here. Very happy with it now in the daylight. Got a bit of firewood for a quick fire off of this log on the ground, which is convenient. Not the best quality, but it'll certainly do. Some nice birch bark, and the stove's up. Make a little igloo for my water hole, and keep it open for as long as I stay here. And I can't wait to guzzle some water, have a nice hot tea, and have a big breakfast. While I wait for the water to boil, let's have a look at the map. I came in around here off of a forestry road, hauled in on this unused forestry road, and I thought, based on my satellite scout, that I could get into these ponds on this creek system. But that proved to be exceedingly difficult. Although yesterday's haul ended up being probably just as bad. I ended up taking the unused forestry road around here, and it curled up alongside this lake in the hills. So I'm right there. And what I intended was to spend my fir the first half of this trip here and then the second half on this larger lake. There may be a way to get through to the large lake from here. This unused forestry road might continue. It's hard to tell on satellite. It's very faint, but I might still be able to get in there. We'll see. But for today and tomorrow, I'm going to hunker down while this cold front moves through. This lake just happens to be on the map. I had no intention of coming in here. The load I held in here has no business going up hills on a freight toboggan. It's meant for flat terrain. My quads are on fire still today. And I packed for flat terrain, so my food bag is robust. But now that it's in here, I have a lot of good food to eat, so that's the upside. A lot to do today, so I'm going to keep this quick and simple. So this will be one of my four freeze-dried meals. I've got pad thai. China masala, curry, and shepherd's pie. Go for the shepherd's pie, but it's actually the lowest calories. So I'm gonna do the pad thai. You need every calorie today.
can't find my ball cap. I must have lost it on the trail yesterday, which sucks. So it's going to be a lot of bedhead. Last night I was too tired, so I just had some cheese and crackers and a bit of pre-cooked bacon. So this is going to be good. So today is an easy day for weather, but overnight it's supposed to change dramatically with heavy snow and strong wind and very cold temperatures. So I'm going to get a flight in, I've charged up the drone, and get the lay of the land, see if that road does potentially lead to that bigger lake before it gets too windy and snowy out there later today. So that flight was very interesting. I can see that the Forester Road will get me to the big lake if I want to go down that hill. The catch there is that I would presumably have to come back up unless I try to link back up with those ponds and make a real loop out of this. But that would be quite an adventure and then there's that creek to consider as well that could be rushing later in this trip so I could get myself into a real jam if I attempt that. Other alternative is doing just a day trip to this big lake so we'll see. For now I'm sitting tight, got to get lots of firewood because I intend to be the coziest person alive tonight. Nice chunk of chaga right beside camp. I'll leave it for now, but I might come back for it. Got a bunch of random camp chores done today, firewood supplies coming along, and I'm having what should have been last night's dinner. A couple of Italian sausages, try not to drool, with mustard and fresh jalapeno. It's still beautiful out just around the freezing mark so it's a perfect opportunity to do a little ice fishing and I can process more wood tomorrow when it's freezing cold. I've got plenty up there anyway. And I'm going to check out these rocks before they get buried in snow because they're quite beautiful. Not really any features to this lake, except for the little rocky point I'm camped on, so this could be a good spot. I'll just try my water hole first. And I brought the underwater camera, another thing that wouldn't have made the cut if I knew I was coming in here. So I'll send this down, see what it looks like down there, see how deep it is. Not surprisingly deep here, nothing to see really. This underwater camera doesn't show depth, but it does have little markers on the line, so I can count it, and that, it adds up to about 35 feet, and pretty close to shore, so it's interesting. This lake has some depth. No action at camp after about 40 minutes, so I've come along to the outlet of the lake, for hole number two, and even though it's a mild winter, still plenty of ice. A good foot there, and I'm not quite through. Much shallower here, but I prefer that for ice fishing. I feel like I'm more likely to find active fish. 
and there's some interesting debris down there as well. Also looks like some little water bugs, water boatmen, I think they're called, something like that, swimming around. Temperature's dropping now, you can really feel it, especially with the wind. So I'm going to pack it in soon, but something interesting just happened. Unfortunately, I wasn't recording with the underwater camera, but suddenly I looked down and it, there was all this junk and debris all over the water. So something sizable swam by and could have been a fish. I guess that's the most likely scenario, but I'm also wondering if it could have been a beaver. There are, I think, two lodges on the far side of the lake here. I wonder if it swam by and kicked it up because it was a big cloud of debris. Back to camp, and after having a bit of a chill out there, temperature's dropping. It's minus 10 now, so it's not bad, but with the wind, decided I needed a little more firewood. Once you start to feel the cold, it seems like you can never have too much firewood. Tortellini on the menu tonight, lots of cheese, spinach, and tomato sauce, and bacon bits. That was a great dinner. Temperature's dropping outside steadily, and the wind is getting pretty strong, but I'm beautifully sheltered from it here, so again, I'm really happy with this camp. And I've got a pretty good arsenal of wood for the night to fend off the cold. I'm not planning on keeping it going all night, but we'll see. Feels a lot better going to bed tonight. Very comfortable, but still exhausted, so off to sweet dreamland. Crazy, I think there's a snowshoe hare out there in the middle of the lake. What on earth would it be doing out there? Just serving itself up on a platter for a lynx. Wonder if there's a predator around. That's such weird behavior. Stand out in the middle of the lake. Well, that was a cool way to start the day off. I scanned the area for a good 10 minutes after I lost the hair and didn't see a lynx or anything following. But also have some chili and garlic naan to start things off and a mug of tea. 
I am the coziest person alive. It occurred to me that I can make things cozier if I ate breakfast in bed. So here I am, love and life. Added some fresh jalapeno and chives to the chili. Wow. Seems like the storm is done. Pretty good dumping, and it got down to minus 25 at least this morning, is when I checked it. I woke up around 6, checked the temperature, and quickly lit the stove. Eventually, I let it go out last night. The wind was easily getting into the 30 kilometer an hour range last night, so it would have been probably more like minus 35 with the wind chill. But I was nicely sheltered on this side of the lake. The south side of the lake's already bare of snow. Wind ripped it all off. Coolest night of the trip coming up. So it's time to get some more wood. Still got plenty to saw up from yesterday. Feels so nice in the sun here. Love a cold sunny day. I can still hear the wind raging over there. It, it sounds like a distant surf. It's like camping on Superior, but perfectly common here. Birds have been great on this trip, and they often come by camp for a visit. Black capped chickadees, red breasted nut hatches, seen the odd woodpecker and gray jay as well, Canada jay. So nice to hear them in winter. Running the stove all night, coldest night of the trip, so I'm getting the mix of rounds, quarters, and halves. And I've got a sausage, my last one, slowly cooking on the stove there with some tea. I'm building up quite an appetite here. What a gorgeous day. Wind's still raging up there in the trees and there's snow devils swirling across the lake. And I've got this secluded spot. No one else around. I've got to enjoy this spot for I think a couple more days. I was planning on having two camps on this trip, but we'll have to see how it pans out, what makes sense. Things have changed obviously since my original plan. Camp chores are all done, I'm ready for a cold night, and I haven't had a stroll around this lake yet, so it's time to change that. I want to see if there are a couple beaver lodges over there.
river lodge is no longer in use and the water levels have obviously gone down here a lot that's why there's a lot of exposed shoreline of rock and this one's sitting like uh, just up in the air now but yet again there's a perfect little den for something there i don't think a bear would go in there looks, the entrance looks pretty tight but yeah a nice little home for something Oh, that was a really nice walk, stoked the fire, and I couldn't be happier that I set up on this side of the lake where I get pretty much all day sun and I'm out of the wind because the other side of the lake was just freezing. Gorgeous sunset to close out day three, but there is a chill in the air. And warm up with some spruce tea. Steep that for about 15 minutes. Dehydrating some refried fried beans and tomatoes. And a really nice dinner tonight. While I wait, brought in a little scotch. Went light on the scotch. Heavy on the food. Questionable. Hmm. Oh, excuse me. My tea is ready. Very zesty. It's good. Lots of vitamin C too. A little bit of the bacon bit rations and jalapeno. Oh, that's the chives. There we go. Stuff is fantastic. I've got to bring jalapeno on more trips. And these babies are going into some quesadillas. Mmm. I know it may seem stupid to be cooking meals in my tent with a suspected bear den just down the lake. I don't normally worry about bears in winter. I carry bear spray spring through fall, and in the winter they're really never on my mind. For some reason, on this trip from the start, even before I saw anything that resembled a den, I, w I had that spooked feeling. So it was funny that I came across that one. Maybe it was for a reason that I had that in mind. As long as you don't go stomping around on their den, you're probably not going to have an encounter. And there are people who, out there who will say, you will never see a bear in, in winter. That's a red flag. Whenever some, someone says anything is a definite in nature, nature has tons of erratic things that happen. So, And bears are not true hibernators. They're, they go into a state of torpor, so they are kind of in a deep sleep. They don't do much, but in true hibernation, heart rate drops and like organs are at a standstill almost. So they're conscious. If you go stomping around, you'll wake them up. So am I truly worried? No. Am I sleeping with my axe? Yes. Why not? It's just sensible precaution. And I'm just listening to one of my favorite books on audiobook, Alone Against the North, Adam Schultz. And there's a heavy bear danger theme, so that's not helping either. But I will put my food bag outside just in case. And I'm going to bundle up and look at the stars. It's crystal clear out there. Should be a decent night for them.
day four, minus 26 out there, so it kind of leveled off. I was expecting it to get colder. I had the stove running all night, so I was comfortable. It's also day four of bedhead, with no hat to conceal my shame. And of course, that happened when I was overdue for a haircut. I'm starting the day off with some non-calzones. Cold, clear morning in the Canadian wilderness. Gotta love it. So now that it's day four, it's time to start making some moves. I've been mulling this over the last few days. Two major considerations for the next steps. Last year I blew up my knee on a winter trip. I shredded my meniscus badly and in surgery they tried to repair it but just had to pull it out because it was just gone. Um, so I have no cartilage in my right knee. So doing stuff like day one, not, not a smart option for me solo in the wilderness. Repetitively anyway. Second consideration, the highs for the coming days, tomorrow is four, then six, four, and six. Potential for rain as well. So, that makes travel incredibly difficult in the winter. I'll show you on the map. So I just printed out a basic map with water bodies at home, marked it up with what I hope to do. That was the trap line that I ended up finding, but I ended up swinging way out here now this continues, I can see on the drone, somewhere over here and down into this big lake. From the air I could see that the trail continues over here and then seems to fizzle out. So conceivably that could be connected with the trap line, but, and that would be a perfect loop, but there's that creek there, and with the warm weather coming, that's just, that can't be an option. It would just be really stupid to set myself up for that. I'm tempted to move camp into the main lake here, but this part looks incredibly steep steeper than day one. So again, for my knee's sake, that's a bad idea. So weather and the knee kind of rule that out. But I can do a day trip to the main lake and that's what I'm thinking of doing today. After that, the question is, do I backtrack and try to get into this pond? It's just a short distance of thick forest that I have to get through, so it's manageable. We'll have to see tomorrow, but today, I'm heading there. We had a perfect day for exploring. A little too cold for ice fishing, so I'm leaving that stuff, packing late. Got lots of time for ice fishing when it warms up. One thing about the injury last year is I learned never travel, especially solo, without pretty good emergency supplies in winter, especially. Got a little folding chair I can sit and hang out on if need be. My day bag, which includes a Mylar sheet, tons of calories worth of food, some emergency fire starting supplies. Got a full first aid kit in here, including a SAM splint and my big wool sweater. So if I went through the ice, I have something to change into. Two liters of hot water and the most important survival item for any YouTuber, my camera case. So I traced out where I think the trail goes on my phone and it should be about five kilometers round trip to the lake and then probably several kilometers on the lake. So gotta get going. It's about minus 15 right now. So it's warmed up and it should hit close to minus 10. So perfect day. cold nights grouse, which are sort of like chickens if you're not familiar, will burrow into the snow and create a little igloo for themselves. They smash right in there, tend to leave a pile of poop like that, and then they take off in the morning. A lot of hills on this trail, and this would be the easy direction, so I'm glad I didn't consider taking the whole load up here. Walking through fresh snow on a cold sunny day, if you've never had the pleasure, it's really quite a treat. These tracks, I think, are Fisher. Two slightly staggered tracks. Looks about the right size. I've only ever seen 
two fleeting glimpses of a fisher on remote islands on Lake Superior. I never get to see them. Could also be Pine Martin, but I think their tracks are supposed to be parallel, not staggered. I think I'm at the top of this trail now, so I'll start going down. The lake I'm camped on is right back there. And I wish there was a clearing in the trees because there'd be quite a view that way. Maybe I'll find one. Another grouse hole. Nice woodpecker on this birch right here. Lots of aspen around here, which looks similar, but it's the birch. And I'm pretty sure it's a hairy woodpecker, but the male hairy and downy woodpeckers look extremely similar. But I think the hairy has a longer bill, so I'm going with hairy. Walk. Here's a riddle for you. What do you call it when you're hoping for northern lights but all you get is stars? Pretty close to the lake. <laughs> I feel like they're trying to intimidate me. Oh, and there's uh, there are a couple woodpeckers here too. I've ever been serenaded like that by birds in winter. I'm at the fork. That way leads hypothetically toward the trapline trail and this toward the main lake. Well that was a first for me. I was coming up to this grouse hole and I thought I saw something dark there and sure enough as I approached it shot out here into the woods. There's a grouse right in the center of the frame, at the base of that birch. Getting very close now. There it is. Sweet. After day one's plans went down the drain, I didn't think I'd be getting here, so this feels extra good. Just gotta go through a little narrows there and then I'll be on the main lake. quite a large lake and it drains at the north end of this bay ahead and forms that creek that stopped me on day one and I figured there might be some sketchy ice here sure enough a little open patch even after a cold night and it's all covered in hoarfrost there beautiful on to the big lake
what a spectacular lake, dotted with islands, and the way the snow was sculpted by that north wind during the storm is, it belongs in an art museum. I wish I could see it all. I wish I could have my camp here, but I'll have to take what I can get and spend a, a nice couple hours here. I think I'll go over to that bay and then tour around the islands and back. Gotta make sure I get back before dark. There are wild beasts out here. Time for a little break. Haven't really stopped all day. It's been too good, too exciting. And it's a little bittersweet that I'm not camping here, but just happy I got to spend the day. I'm in the island cluster now, so I'll start working my way back slowly. It's gonna take probably three hours and I don't wanna get caught out here in the dark. Oh, that was wonderful. Back to the Narrows. About two hours probably to get back. And my feet are starting to drag, but the stove will be lit with dinner on in no time. Home sweet home. Got myself freshened up, changed the clothes, mug of tea, and just as the sun's going down, rehydrated lasagna for dinner. Delicious. And here's the answer to the riddle. What do you call it when you're hoping for the northern lights but just get stars? Constellation prize. Mm. Simple living out here. Feels good. Around another bend. I caught hold of a magnificent sight, a majestic female moose standing together on the bank with a young calf. Day five, before braving the blustery boreal, black bean breakfast burritos. Just about ready. Got down to minus 15 this morning. Actually, it was minus 17 last night. It's been rising slowly. It's supposed to hit four degrees and sunny this afternoon. So it's time to give this lake proper ice fish. And tomorrow, weather permitting, I'm strongly debating trying to get back to the creek at the pond. I don't, I don't even know, can't even describe why exactly. It just looks scenic to me. It looks like a spot that's off the beaten path and wouldn't get seen much. It might not hold any fish. It might be shallow. It's 
just calling me. Got camp chores done, a little firewood for tonight. And I wanted to note one thing. I didn't use a tripod or a bipod for the, the pipe on this trip. Instead went with these lines. And I really like this. I'll probably always go with this. It's just one less thing to have to get. I got a hose clamp on there. And for now, some paper clips and a split ring. Okay, on to the lake. So I'm back to the outlet for the lake. It seems like the most promising feature and I did see that debris cloud get kicked up, which I now know it wasn't beavers. There's no inflow to the lake, nothing significant. It's just like a bowl on these hills collecting the water that falls on them. So, seems like my best shot. And today is a win-win. If I get something, then I know. I, I'm always just curious what's in a lake. And if I don't get anything, then I can move on in peace to hopefully greener pastures. Well, I'm on top of a log, I like that. It's good to have a solid piece of structure. Nothing doing down there aside from the odd aquatic insects swimming by. But at least I got to the bottom of the debris cloud mystery. On the bottom it's quite mucky and under that there's sometimes gas trapped. And when you make bottom contact with the lure, sometimes uh, some of that gas just belches out. So that's what it was. Not a fish to be seen yet. So after about half an hour at the first hole, I'm out in the middle of the lake just to try something different. But to be honest, my mind is elsewhere. I'm really thinking about tomorrow. I almost wish I had left for the ponds today, but then I wouldn't have even had a good chance to ice fish this, and that just seems like a waste. Well, this little lake is shockingly deep. Just reached the end of my spool, which I think is 100 feet long, and I can't see bottom or anything, so that is very interesting. It is nice out here in the middle of the lake to have a panoramic view and I'm wondering about that snowshoe hare that was out here in the middle of the snowstorm. Was it just admiring the view? I can't imagine why else it would be out here. Spent about an hour in the middle of the lake. One last shot here by camp. Well. Even if the ice fishing is slow, it's a wonderful day to be ice fishing. Wind is rushing through the trees and it's so pleasant, so I'm happy. And it's gonna be hard to leave camp behind. That's the one thing about leaving. This one is quite perfect. Got a perfect sun exposure, but still quite sheltered. Great view, perched 10 or 15 feet above the lake and tons of standing dead firewood and birch bark. So it's really a perfect winter camp. Hopefully I'll find something decent tomorrow. Back home for the final fire here. Tomorrow morning I'm packing up and leaving. Got a full day. Moving hot tent camps is always a long day. So, And there's a chance of rain later in the afternoon and evening. So I want to get the shelter up as soon as possible. Time to light the fuse. Made a fire before I left. Always nice to come back to. And there's some scotch that needs swigging. So here's the plan tomorrow. 
And keep in mind, all the lines I've drawn on here are not spatially accurate at all. But, give you the idea. Come back on the trail that I took in, get back up to here. It's more like over here, and this is the trap line. And it's just bulldoze to get over to the trap line, which runs up along the north side of this pond. And it's funny that I would call it a pond because it's actually bigger than the lake I'm on. So call it a lake, whatever you want. It's just a widening of this creek that flows through here. From the air and on satellite, it just looks quite charming in here. So I can't wait. Six, and it is a privilege to be waking up so mild like this. This feels easy at freezing. And I got as much done as I could last night, including something as little as putting a tea bag and sweetener in my cup. Ready to go at 9 a.m. on the nose. Pretty darn good for hot tent camp. Passing the alleged bear den one more time. Back to the trail. It's gonna be a long haul with these snow conditions. It's so soft. Thankfully I'm going down these hills. Just about to start the descent. And there's a pretty good view here. Couldn't see it with the snow on the way in on day one. So I'm back to the area where I want to cut through the bush to get to the pond and that trap line trail. And I've come to the conclusion that my route on day one was absolute madness. Coming back was downhill in this snow. It's like clumping to snowshoes and whatnot. Um, it was tough, but day one, that was, that was insane. I should never have done that. Anyway, I did have one decent idea on day one, which is to split up the load, leave the freight toboggan, and do five trips probably with the utility sled. So that's gonna have to be my approach. With the melt yesterday, there's just no, no chance of getting a freight toboggan through there. So it's gonna be slow and steady, but it should get there. Okay, here we go. I just scouted the trail, cleared it. It's 250 meters is the path of least resistance, which seems like nothing, but it's just the freight toboggan's too long. So this will be doable, and I think I can get it down to four loads, which I've split up fairly evenly here. So it shouldn't be too bad. So we got the first load to the trap line, 100 meters down the trap line, which is pretty clear. And then 100 meters 
through these woods, which is not bad at all. And I can get to the pond here, but to get my first look. Chickadee's yelling at me. Wow. What a slice of paradise. Okay, I'm gonna have to go a little further down the trap line, add some distance, but I wanna be more out in the middle there. Uh, it just occurred to me that didn't make sense at all. Why go in the trap line where there's blowdown? Travel on the pond. I'm so thrilled. So I look for the closest spot I can find to camp, and that'll probably mean half a kilometer for each load. So before long, I found a trail leading back to the trap line. So that would have got me here in the end, but it doesn't matter either way. And there's a pretty perfect clearing here for the tent. I don't think I'll find better, and I don't want to add too much distance. And it's nice to have the illusion of being you're the first person to fish something, but that's never the case. <laughs> Not a problem. I'm sure it sees very little action. I think this will be home. Okay, three more trips each way. And then I'm in paradise. Load number two. Three. Number four, baby. Made it. It's the highlight of the trip for me right now. Energy is low though. I need some fuel. I'm gonna cook something up, boil some water, and enjoy this paradise. Have it all to myself! A little ton left to do today, but it's just good to get off my feet. <laughs> Setting up the frame, I've got a line that I run from end to end, and that's not just to hang things off of, to dry. I have a taut line hitch here, so I just tighten that up, and then that keeps this stuck part together with the two orange corners. The legs slide in and out freely from the orange corners. There's no way to stop that until you get them into the corners of the tent, and then that pulls it all together. Should be a really nice camp. Mug of tea and shepherd's pie. Ah, so uplifting. Energy levels are already up before even eating it. Sometimes you just need a good old boil up. It is four degrees Celsius. My boots are sopping wet. No shortage of dead standing wood here. I won't need much with the temperature is coming. So it's nice to get some in the bag. Tomorrow could be fairly rainy. Final chore of the day. I'm gonna light the fire and dry out. So here it is, camp two. Pretty happy with it. A little gear tree over there. Had to get some boughs to stay out of the wet stuff. 
And the hanging line is gonna be hopping tonight. Second ration of chili tonight. Oh, I need a good meal. And then I'm gonna drift right off to sleep. Dry, clean clothes on. Actually, this shirt's unworn. I've been saving it for the right day. It feels amazing. Seam fitting as well. Delicious piece of garlic naan. I can't wait. Plenty of cheese in there. Oh yeah. It is way too hot in here with the outside temperature, but I gotta turn this thing into a dryer basically. Mm. Oh, that's good. Oh, I can't keep my eyes open any longer. So happy I'm here and can't wait to explore this lake tomorrow. The rain held off all day and on my satcom forecast it looks like it might come in a bit and it might even be snow now that it's a little colder so fingers crossed for that Morning. Day seven bedhead. Situation continues to deteriorate. I've got Corolla for breakfast, seeds, um, sunflower, and pumpkin and almond, powdered milk, cinnamon, and dehydrated apples. That's like probably three apples there. So a good breakfast to get going. And the tea as always. It rained a bit last night and freezing rain, but no snow. So if you're starting to think, what if all the snow melts with this warm spell? It's a good question. Satcom forecast is calling for strong easterly winds today and possible rain this evening and overnight. So east winds are never any good. Feeling very happy with camp. I'm gonna prep a bit more firewood this morning while it's cool. And then hit the lake, which I have a beautiful view of here. Actually, I'd have a great sunrise view if it wasn't overcast. So hopefully I'll get that at some point. Another charming aspect of this camp is that it has an indoor plant, small balsam fir, taking quite a shine to it. And I'm calling him Walsam Fir because balsam fir eventually becomes walls. The very walls that plague backcountry users. Not me. I would never do that to you, Dad. So here's the deal on these ponds. I'm camped somewhere on the north shore of this main pond here. In fact, I'm going to call it a lake. It's bigger than my last camp. It's just an unnamed lake. And then there's a second sort of separate basin here, which looked shallower on, on satellite. Not, not sure. And then this third smaller basin looked very shallow, so probably focus my efforts here today and maybe try these later in the trip. One last order of business before I get out there. The blustery boreal. I harvested a little bit of the chaga that was on a birch right beside the camp one tent and I'm going to plunk it into this kettle and just keep that simmering there and I'll have some lovely chaga tea full of antioxidants.
I got my camp chores done, shored up the firewood supply a bit, and it's just a couple degrees below freezing. I hope it stays below. I'm heading out on the lake, do some ice fishing and exploring. And that lure that I saw yesterday hanging off the tree is a worm harness, which is commonly used to troll for walleye in the summer. So I have a sneaking suspicion or a hope that this is a water, walleye water body. So I crossed over to the south side of the lake. That hill back there, I was camped on the other side of that. That's where the little lake was. And this bay is where the inflow is from the big lake that I snowshoed to. So I think this will be the best bet. You get all those nutrients coming into the lake here. So I think fish will be attracted to it and a big point here at the mouth of the bay. So stop number one. The ice is plenty thick here, just as thick as anywhere else, over a foot. But I'm sure around the inflow it's pretty pretty sketchy. So I'll stay well clear of that. And let's have a look. Hole number two, which has some more features. There are a couple of logs falling into the water here, which made me stop. Some small weeds down there, but nothing yet. Oh, he's back. Water over there. That's awesome to see. There's some visibly bad ice here at the outlet, which was expected but uh, I'm gonna cautiously get out here. I think it's the best spot for fishing, so take a small risk. bad ice right over there. So I drilled a few holes as I came further and further out and no problem. Plenty of ice. Very shallow though. You see the mud there that came up. The bay is extremely shallow here and it's almost frozen to bottom so that's not promising for fishing but what a treat to get to watch this otter. That's why I love off the beaten path places like this where you can find more wildlife. Totally worth it for just for that guy. And that's the other thing with the otter. I don't think too many fish are just going to be chilling out around here. That otter wants a fish for dinner even more than I do. a little farther out to get some depth and I nearly dropped the camera on a northern pike. It looked like a log at first. I was like what the heck is that? Okay. Let's see if he's still around. Some freshwater clams down there which I'm sure the otter is enjoying. Yep, 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 yep. Whoa. Come on. No! Yes, yes, still there, still there. Oh. 
Uh oh, tangled up in the camera. That's not good. Okay, camera's out. Well, my battery chose a funny time to die. But look at that perfect eater northern pike. Got my club here, I'll dispatch it right away. Thank you so much. What an absolute gift. Perfect eating size, maybe four or five pounds. Oh, yes. My body could sure use this. I can't wait to have this for dinner. I'm gonna flay it up right here. And of course I'll leave the carcass for my friend over there. Yes. That was exciting. Just cleaned it up with the five fillet method. And this one is a female, you can see the egg sac there. And I eat that sometimes, but I'll leave it for the otter. In this case, it's hit or miss. And five beautiful fillets for me. Plenty of meat on the carcass here in the Y bones, which you have to fillet around, unfortunately. But in this case, a happy result for the otter. So I caught the fish there at those narrows. Walking back to my original hole. I haven't actually seen the otter in maybe half an hour. Anyway, I'll leave it here. I'm sure I'll pick up the scent. And thanks to the fish. And now we wait. The wind should be spraying that scent all over the place. It should be easy for something to find. Well, it's been about 45 minutes and I badly wanted to see the otter enjoy the fish, but no dice. And I gotta get back and enjoy my own dinner. So I'm gonna head back to camp. It's pretty chilly out here in this wind too. It's supposed to be some really strong wind tonight and possibly rain, so. Yeah, I wanna get back to camp and get nice and cozy. I just had salmon, spice, or Tex-Mex. I can't remember what was in that little jar, but it's working. Mm. Yeah, that was very satisfying. Washed it down with a nice mug of chaga tea. Very dark. It's tasty. It's kind of like in between a coffee and a tea. Subtle vanilla. It's hard to describe. It is unique. Subtle honey. It's good. And earthy. Very earthy. Well, I've had a lovely evening here. Looking out my window, drinking chaga, and listening to the wind, which is supposed to continue getting stronger. So, hopefully all these trees hang on tonight. Some big spruces here, so. Other than that, it's pretty much a wrap for day seven. Tomorrow I hope to do some more exploring, but I'll have to see what the weather does.
This is some magic this morning. We would have started the day eight. Nut hatches and chickadees are around, and woodpeckers and the breeze. Gorgeous fog rolling over the lake. Unreal. And it's supposed to hit seven degrees today after a thunderstorm last night. And earlier in this trip, it was minus 26 air temperature. It would have been at least minus 35 with the wind chill in a snowstorm. That is a 42 degree Celsius temperature difference on one trip. I've never had that. Absolutely insane weather. The only casualty here is the snow and I am somewhat concerned about hauling out, but it'll be what it'll be. If need be, I'll leave the camp here. This is my contingency plan. Wait for some snow and come back, which I wouldn't mind doing. This is just an amazing spot. I got the sunrise through the window as I hoped. Walsam is quite enjoying it. He said he's ready to start growing season. Happy times. And another mug of chaga. I leave that chunk of chaga in the kettle overnight in cold water because it actually extracts antioxidants in a different way than hot water. So you can get a double bone benefit. And you can also extract, once that's tapped out, the remaining antioxidants using alcohol to make a tincture. We have done errands on that at home. Morning. Morning world. This is now my longest winter trip ever. I've done a few week long trips. First time I've hit eight days. So I was woken around 1 a.m. last night with this deafening roar. And I thought it was the wind at first. I was relieved to realize that it was thunder. After that front hit, the wind died down a little bit, but the rain continued through the night. And you may be wondering how a cotton canvas tent doesn't leak. Well, the fa fabric is treated for mildew, fire retardancy, and I believe water repellency as well. But even without that, it's a tight weave and the water just wicks down the outside and no leaks whatsoever. Pretty interesting how that works. And with all that water, the lake is pretty soupy today. So I'm gonna take a stroll down the trap line trail and see if it'll offer any benefit to getting back to the main trail in a couple of days. So I'm a kilometer down the trap line and it is in fantastic condition. It would have been the best trail of the trip if I had hauled on this. But I have no idea where it starts and no idea how far I have to go to find out. So I'll keep walking for a bit but it might be too far to be of any use. Looks like the Lynx has used this trail since the last snowfall. Pretty round track, no claws. The more notable predators around here are lynx, wolf, bear, and there was a cougar spotted in Puckasaw National Park a year or two ago. Six months before that, I was in Puckasaw National Park driving around, or just outside of it actually, and two or three hundred meters down the road, I saw a long figure with a long tail. And I was, I was like, there's no way that was a, a mountain lion or a cougar. So I talked myself into believing it was just a wolf and it was far down the road and I just, it was kind of a mirage. But then the trail cam footage showed up from Puckasaw, so I probably did see that cougar, which is pretty cool. Big moose tracks now.
Moose and Lynx tracks have been going alongside each other for a bit now, along with mine now. And then the Lynx abruptly veers off. Moose continues. I've seen trees with a lot of cankers, if that's what you call these, I can't remember. But this one takes the cake. It is more growth than it is wood, even the branches. A couple of particularly huge trembling aspen here. So this is pretty interesting. After two and a half kilometers, this trail hits another forestry road as I thought it might. This trail is not visible on satellite. And I could exit this way. It, sa it would save me doing the, fo the four runs back and forth with the utility sled, which would be nice, but it's a little further with the freight toboggan. So I'll have to mull it over. And if I ever ran into an animal, I do have a weapon. This, sol this tripod is quite solid, and the head on it, yeah. Back to camp, and here's why I stuck to the trap line today. This lake is turning into soup, so it's supposed to get to minus 6 tonight, and then minus 11 for the final night. Hopefully that's the case. And then tomorrow I'll explore those distant ponds. Losing the snow here. Just brought my ice fishing gear down. And I was just going to stay close to camp. But in the last 30 or 40 minutes, it's gotten even worse. So I'm going to pass and hope that this freezes up reasonably well for tomorrow. What a mess. Just padded my firewood supply a little more to see me through the rest of the trip. And I wish I could do more with today, it's beautiful, but just a soupy mess. One thing I can do is go retrieve my freight toboggan. I've decided I'm going to take the trail that I explored today. It's a little more distance, but I don't have to go back and forth with the utility sled. And there's snow here, there were no bald spots, so I'll take that assurance. So I'm going to go grab the sled, and then I will just cozy up in the tent. Back to my original trail, where I left the toboggan and with no load and a reasonably well established trail now be no problem to get it through with no load it slides through everything pretty well but i made the right call this would have been hell this is what i mean by walsam fur be a lot worse than this. Snow's decent here, but stuff like this makes me more confident in the trap line. Look at this gnarly chaga. It's a good size, and chaga is fairly valuable as well. Some people sell it online. It could be $100 worth, maybe more. So since I have the time today, I took a little detour back to the creek that I hit on day one. Just curious to see how, fa how fast it's flowing. Yeah, it's definitely got a bit more flow. Nothing insane. I could have put some logs here and threw some snow on top, but it just seemed like a risk and there's so many variables on day one. Oh, it's nice to hear flowing water. More chickadees, nuthatches, and woodpecker they seem to travel together, which is interesting. And there's an old bird's nest here that's broken on this branch. Okay, whole family's back together. And tomorrow is one of the most anticipated days of the trip. Finally get to explore the rest of these ponds. Not much snow left here.
Look at that, the water's draining down my water hole. Now it's all scuzzy. Well, I guess I'll just scrape some water off the surface somewhere else. It's cleaner than that. Pad Thai kit for dinner, and I was wishing I had some eggs, or tofu, or some fresh veggies, but I also have some cashews, so that'll have to do. Comes with some dried chives and peanuts too, should be pretty good. Some hungry crow out there too. Close out day eight. I regret to inform you that I have another riddle for you to endure. Here it is. On you I float, I walk on water, trudging after the mink and the otter, clicking and clacking in frozen sand, drifting across a desolate land. Hours will spend bound to each other, till I grow weary of my wooden brother. I'll take you off for a while, I think, but quickly recall how fast I sink. Don't worry, it's just the surface ice. Plenty of good ice beneath it. Gorgeous start to day nine, and it's minus six or seven this morning. Almost forgot what it's like to, to feel chilly. Today is the day I've been waiting for. Get to explore the enchanted ponds. The ponds that for some reason are just calling to me. So I'm really excited. I'm gonna get some lasagna on for breakfast and get on my way. The heat of these last few days and the heat of the stove have been waking up a number of spiders. Almost a spring, buddy. Last night, Walsam confided in me that his crush lives right down the street. Her name's Felicia. Put this log there so I don't crush her. All right, I'm ready to get on my way. I was gonna leave my ice fishing gear and pack light, but I can't resist. I'm just gonna break this down for now. I'm gonna break this down for now. <laughs> Could not have asked for better conditions for this day. First stop, Pike Carcass. Ice looks a little sketchy around here. Beautiful though. No, that's just the old ice. It's good, very good ice but now it's exposed because there's no snow on top. Look at that. That is gorgeous. I do have my picks on me though, of course. This is that slippery ice that's hard to pull yourself out of, so these would help me get grip. Oh, I love that. Well, the pike's gone. I'd be shocked and disappointed if it weren't, but Unfortunately, no snow left to show tracks or anything, but it was probably the otter. In any case, I'm glad something got it. So here's the plan. I'm gonna check out this interesting bowl-shaped wetland. I'm here right now. 
and then after that I'll continue and just do a loop around these ponds and back and see what catches my attention for fishing. Stop number two. Oh yeah. Beautiful spot. This is my kind of scenery. Hill in the background and a big wetland. Lovely spot for a beaver lodge. This one's somewhat in shambles, so it's probably abandoned. There's a long track straight across this little bowl. And it leads to the some flowage here, so it could be the otter again. But tracks are so indistinct. Yeah, there's an otter slide right there. They slide on their bellies. I'm at the end of the lake. Got the first connector stream. And it seems to be quite a tangle with no sort of a path that I can see. So I'll have to leave the sled here. And just carry on packing light. Any fish species that would be in these ponds should also be in here. In the spring, they could easily flow into this. So it shouldn't be like there's brook trout in there and not here. A secluded pond on the other end here. Really love this. If there had been more snow, I would love to haul in here and set up a third camp. Uh, to be an otter sliding around on your belly. There's another little bay that looks like it's getting ready to ice out. It's early March. And for reference, this sort of thing and this level of snow usually doesn't happen until early May here. So, just a crazy winter. On to pond number three. This somehow sounds even cooler right now. These ponds are getting me closer to the feeling that I live for, which is seeing and walking and paddling new places exploring them for myself and having the sense that not too many people tread on this land or see it. There is that trail that leads to the lake I'm camped on, which sort of took away from that sense, but you know, you're never really the first to see anything. And really it's most likely a handful of anglers and hunters who use the lake that I'm camped on. There are thousands of trails out here in the bush and most of them are only known by word of mouth. So generally not too many people know them, but it's great to get off a beaten path like this. End of the road. The end of the third pond, there's a long beaver dam. A small lodge out there. And a large one in the distance there. But the ice is getting kind of sketchy. There's moving water here, so I'm going to head back and I've got plenty of time for fishing. Yesterday's riddle answer, snowshoes. Although the ones I brought in this trip are just lightweight modern ones since there's not much snow, not wooden, and I'm not sinking much or at all right now. Beaver paradise here. Back to home base, time for fishing. Still curious if there's anything else besides pike in here, including that hunchback walleye. Starting at the outlet of the ponds. Getting ready here, extraction tools. I do keep a spare set of blades on a longer trip like this. If you bottom out on a rock, they're kaput. You need a super sharp edge to drill through this. 
moved a little further out for hole number two and I love fishing shallow because A is better lighting for the camera which I can't use right now because it's low battery and B you can even see right down the hole it's fun to watch So I've been all around the lake, drilled about eight holes, including where I caught the pike. No luck today, but I'm just happy I got a pan full of fish. I'm not going to be too greedy about it. And there's a big hole here. This is the outlet bay of the lake. And it's pretty unusual shape. I wouldn't be surprised at all if a moose went through here at some point recently. That's my guess. But no tracks to reveal anything more. It's getting pretty icy out here. Skating rink. Beautiful day though. Yet another beaver lodge at the outlet. This one seems like it might not be used. But it's time to head back to camp. I'm hankering a nice hot meal and some tea. Back to camp. Not quite empty handed. A little brief fever chewed log to add some hardwood to the fire tonight. Perch. I'm not sure where the third one went. I have to keep an eye on my surroundings. One thing to see an animal at the side of the highway, another thing altogether to see it on day nine of a solo backcountry trip in winter. I can't believe that just happened. That was one of, if not the best wildlife setting in my life. I've seen tons of bears and moose and special ones, but I've never seen wolves like that where they let me actually film them. Oh man, I was shaking with excitement. And one went out of view, so I had no idea. For a moment I thought, were those two trying to distract me and the other one was gonna circle around. What a capper to this trip. Oh, I truly can't believe that just happened. And I just heard a little stirring. Thank goodness it is dead quiet right now. Or I never would have seen them. They would have walked right past camp and I never would have known. I'm absolutely thrilled by that. Last call to the watering hole, and I am just still just overjoyed. Brought the axe just to be cautious, but attacks on humans are so rare, so nothing to be too afraid of. 
It's supposed to be clear tonight, so I plan to stargaze. And that'll have a slightly different vibe as well, but I'll keep the axe close. Just in case, you gotta respect their power. Going to have a look for any tracks. Oh yeah, there are some. And it's not that the wolves are benevolent toward humans. No, they need every bit of food they can find. They just, I guess they understand that we're a power. Look at this. See, lynx are more rounded without the claws. Here you can see clearly see the claw marks. That's the one that went back in. Just fantastic. I said these pawns were calling to me. I never could have expected this much. What an experience. I'm just soaking up the final evening here, still in awe. Tomorrow I'll be continuing on the trap line, which will go somewhere like, like that. And then I'll take another forestry road up to here for about a kilometer, I think. And then there's the main forestry road that I came in on. I'll walk three kilometers back that way and get back to my car and drive back here to pick up my load. Day nine, I never thought it would come to this. My men have resorted to cannibalism. Two of my devices are currently devouring their fellow drone, controller, and battery pack just for the energy to stay alive one more night. And we thought AI was the threat. Well, I can easily say now that this is my favorite winter trip ever, hands down. And I thought that the whole trip was going to hell. After my plans on day one got totally scrambled and I ended up at that little lake in the hills. But as fate would have it, I still got to see the lake so that I planned to. When I discovered that there was a trail to the big lake, I saw that big wind sculpted lake. And then eventually these charming ponds, the enchanted ponds. Generally, I got to cover a lot of ground on this trip. And it gave me that feeling of exploration and adventure that I don't always get on a winter trip. I didn't see a soul out here or even have any sign of anyone else having been here this season. I got to move camp this trip, which I don't often do in winter with a hot tent. Alone, it's a big job with this outfit. And the wildlife, even before tonight, was, was really nice. There were tons of birds, as many birds as I've ever got on a winter trip. The interaction with the otter was a highlight. They were such interesting animals, so playful and curious. And I'll never forget the snowshoe hare standing in the middle of the lake in a snowstorm. <laughs> it was so random. Also got to track lots of animals and got a pike dinner for me and my friend. And the rest of my meal plan was very good as well. Lots of enjoyable meals. Put in just a little extra effort on this trip and it paid dividends, except for hauling it up the hill. Then I suffered for it. And then the wildlife was just capped off with one of the best interactions I've ever had in the wild. And after thinking about it, only two things I can think of that compare are the two woodland caribou that I've seen in my life. And one link, lynx interaction, one good one I've ever had. But aside from that, that was tops. Having them stare me in the eye and to have one come out and two and then three, a pack. It was amazing, unforgettable. And then there was all kinds of weather, from minus 26 before the wind chill to a heat wave, plus seven in the winter. There were snowstorms, sleet, and even a thunderstorm, strong wind. And finally on this trip, I got to spend a full 10 days in winter for the first time. And it's always satisfying to explore your own personal boundaries. I know this wasn't some heroic, epic achievement, but it still means something to me. And it's an experience I think I'll look back on later in life and be really glad that I had it. And I could happily stay out here longer. 
15 days if you like it I would be happy to do maybe even longer but I'd be out of batteries to document any of it and that's that's been the biggest challenge of this trip is trying to power all these devices and I, I love filming it wouldn't be the same without it for me so it's totally worth it but I've had to ration the batteries pretty strictly the last few days I've really restricted my phone use as well. There's no signal out here, but I still use it for various things, including audiobooks like I was listening to earlier. Now, if I did listen to an audiobook, I'd put it on really low volume and have the phone right beside my ear while I was trying to fall asleep, <laughs> just to save a little power. And aside from that, I've only got a day and a half left of food. I want to get back to Erin, and I have lots to do at home before the busy spring canoe tripping season starts. And spring isn't too far off now, which is very exciting. In winter, it's the darkness that's tough, not the cold. And you can just feel the swell of life that's about to return to this land in the north. It's very exciting, but it's also a wonderful time of winter. So I've got now, and I've got spring coming up. It's wonderful. I'm just gonna enjoy this last evening here by the stove. Tomorrow I got a full day packing up, hauling out, and getting back home. A nice place going and close it down for the night. A little pile of firewood here if I want to keep it going. And I've got my stick for the damper so I don't have to get up. Closing this flue damper really slows down the burn. Just like that. Okay. What a trip. Day 10. Last night I told myself if I happened to wake up early, I could have one more fire. I had just enough wood. And I woke up at 5, had to pee, the ice was booming out there, and decided to get up and enjoy it and watch the sun rise, which is just starting to glow on the horizon. Back to the forest road after the trap line, the snow held up and all went well. Got about a kilometer down this road with the load and then a three kilometer walk back to my car on the main forestry road to wrap this up. Just a week before this trip, Aaron and I did our seven day igloo build trip. So I spent 17 of the last 24 days out here in the bush in winter. So glad I got to get the most of this season while it lasts. Maybe there's more to come. Maybe this is just a false spring, but this has really recharged my batteries. Anyway, this battery is about to die, so see you in the next one. Yeah! Every year, the world gets a little more crowded, a little less wild, a little more subtle. We are fortunate to still have vast areas of wilderness and some unexplored territory. But what remains is unlikely to last long in the face of an ever-growing human population, coupled with an insatiable thirst for natural resources.